Okay, so now we have a sense of sort of the conic sections, the parabola, the ellipse, the hyperbola, and so forth. And the question is, suppose someone just gives you an algebraic equation, how can you recognize what it is, if in fact it is a conic section at all? Well, it turns out that by just using the technique of completing the square, we can actually uncover whether this thing has conic section potential or not. Let me actually show you a specific example, and you can see what a wonderful application of completing the square this thing is. Suppose I hand you the following relation. So here's the relation. 4x squared plus 9y squared minus 16x minus 36y plus 16 all equals 0. E uck. Look at that thing. Dip, 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 dip. It goes on forever. The question is, can we actually make progress to figuring out what that is, if it's anything of, of interest? Well, it turns out that we can. For one thing, we can notice that we can put the x's together, and we can put the y's together. When I look at the x's, what I can do here is actually factor out the common factor of 4. And here with the y's, I can factor out the common factor of 9. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that in the following way. So it's going to look like this. 4 times x squared, and then I have a minus 4x because I factored out a 4. And then I have a plus, and then if I factor out the 9, I see 9 times y squared. And then if I factor out the 9 here, I see a minus 4y. And then don't forget the plus 16, that's just sort of hanging out there, and that equals 0. So that's where we are. Okay, now why did I write it in such a peculiar way? Well, I wrote it in this peculiar way because actually I'm now going to use the technique of completing the square. I want to write this as something squared, and this is something squared, so I can better see what this whole thing looks like. Well, what do I do? Well, I take the term in front of the x, negative 4, take half of it, negative 2, and square it. That would be plus 4. And I add it in. But to make sure that I don't disrupt everything, I immediately subtract it out. That's just 0. I've done absolutely nothing. I've done nothing but added 0, but a fancy looking 0. What would I do here? Exact same thing. I take negative 4, take half of it, which would be negative 2 and squared, I get plus 4. So I add in plus 4, but to keep me on the up and up, I immediately subtract it. Now what's the point of this? The point of this is that this term right there now can be factored. It's x minus 2 all squared. So I've got that going for me, but now I also have a 4. Don't forget to distribute the 4 times this minus 4. And so what I see here is the following. I see 4 times, and this whole thing right here, becomes x minus 2 all squared. I completed the square. But don't forget that this 4 has to hit that minus 4. I've got to distribute that 4 to here, and so I see a minus 16. That's the price I paid to get that 4 in the picture. Notice that 4 is really a 16 after you distribute, but I kept it factored out. Now here I do the same kind of thing. I see a plus 9 times, and this can be factored, these first few terms, y minus 2 all squared. And then I have another contribution. This time the contribution is minus 36. Don't forget the plus 16, and that equals 0. Well, I've got a minus 16 and a plus 16, so actually they cancel. They add to give 0. This 30, minus 36 I can bring to this side, and what I see is 4 times x minus 2 squared and then I have a plus 9y minus 2 squared equals 36. Let me now divide everything through by 36 because I want a 1 here, because I want something squared plus something squared equals 1. This is beginning to sound and smell to me. I smell ellipse in the air because I see something squared plus something squared will equal 1. This sounds like an ellipse is forming. So if I divide every, sing every, single, every single thing through by 36, what would I see? Well, when I divide this term by 36, I would see x minus 2 squared over 9. Plus, and when I divide this term by the 36, I would see y minus 2 squared over uh, 4. And that equals 1. And I recognize now this is, in fact, an ellipse. So this awful looking thing here is really an ellipse. And I can tell you everything about it. I can tell you where it's centered. It's centered at 2, 2. And the major axis is going to be on the x direction and 6. The minor axis is going to be 4. So in fact, I can even not only tell you 
what this is. I could even sketch you a, a graph of this awful looking thing. It looks so awful. And now I tamed it and made it my friend. Wap choo! Wap choo! I don't know why I did that, but I did. All right. Now, what do we have here? So it's centered at 2, 2. So it's centered at 2. Well, that was my taming, I guess. So there's sort of the center of this thing. And then in the x direction, I'm going to go out three units from the center. So that's one, two, three more units. So that's at this point here, which is one, two, three, four, five. So it's five comma two. This is the point five comma two. Then I can go three units in this direction. One, two, three. That's negative one comma two. And then in the y, uh, the y axis here, in the y direction, in the minor axis, I know I go two up and two down, the square root of this. So two down is right along here. Two up is at four. And so that complicated, awful looking thing actually can be graphed. In fact, not a bad graph, by the way. Just grazes this axis because it touches it right there. So that's really, really, I think, pretty cool. You can take something that looks really awful, you can tame it down by just completing the square and carefully trying to write it in a shape that we can recognize and recognize that this, in fact, is an ellipse because of the plus sign there. And this is what it would look like. Notice, by the way, if this were a minus sign, that would actually make this thing a what? A hyperbola. And the hyperbola would open how, by the way? It would open like this because I have the x thing up front. Anyway, neat example. See you soon.